Welcome to Brainy Bricks in our second installment on how to build rocket cars. Let's watch them go. You may be looking at these cars going, Brainy Bricks, what the heck have you done? What are these? Why are they so plain? Why do they look so silly? Why can you not fit a minifig in these cars? Technically, I guess you could, but they're not really designed for minifigs. They're designed for physics and fun. These, my friends, are my dragsters. First, I just want to look at both of these. This one, believe it or not, including the wheels and axle as one piece, has 27 pieces. Has more pieces than this one here. This one actually has 23. So 50 pieces all together can create these two cars. And the beauty of these cars is you can create them however you want, however you see fit. You can create your own custom dragsters and I'm gonna show you how and what they actually do. So, how are these propelled? Looking at it, there's no wires, strings, there's no Technic bricks, and I don't consider pushing it, actually being self-propelled. These are balloon cars, yay! I tried and tried to find an actual balloon with the word Lego or Logo Lego printed on it. It did not work. I could not find them anywhere. There is a special piece inside these cars that actually allows us to blow these up and utilize these properly. I will show you a video of these cars going across the table. It's a rather small table, but you'll see them rocket past here in just a few minutes. Our racing tires, our racing slicks, work really, really well. When I had them on the front and back, they were a little too heavy. So on carpet, it was just on a table, they actually worked well, but not as well as this setup here. The front wheels are the train wheels. They actually came on the holiday train set that they made, the free set. I think one of the sets. Maybe it was a train creator, like a little $7 creator set. The ones that I got here, I found on the pick a brick wall at a Lego store about four hours from here. And I actually tried these wheels because of how light they are. I'm trying to make these things light on both the front and the back. And all it did was go no control whatsoever, no grip. It just slid around. It looked silly. The key to building your own, I'm gonna call them rocket cars, because why not? It sounds cool. To building your own rocket car and getting them to successfully uh, race is slicks on the back, uh, train wheels on the front, I'm sure you can tinker and find your own preference, but start with that. I, I guarantee you, you're going to enjoy it. Streamline look. Everything's got to be aerodynamic. I actually use the wheel hub pieces here by themselves, which honestly I think looks pretty cool. This one's open, and this one also has a tail fin. I'm sure you're wondering, why is that tail fin this way and not this way? And it's because the back of the car, which is part of the secret to getting a balloon car to work, has to be flat. You're gonna actually put your lips right up against here to blow up your balloon, which again, I'll show you in a minute. So we're gonna take apart this car here and show you what is the secret to getting your balloons to work properly. This is part one of the secret. This is the back. This is where your balloon will end up going through. I have a one by four modified plate that's with a stud on either side, smooth in the middle. Uh, you can also use a one by two smooth and then two one by one studs. And then my balloon goes right inside, just like that. And what that does is it creates this real small profile. Your lips fit perfectly and you can blow it up just like that, which allows for rocket power. Now, before you connect this piece, because again, this piece is gonna go in the back of the vehicle, there's one more piece, and I don't know the official Lego name for it, but I call it a handlebar piece, is this blue piece here. It is the only part of the cars that I have opposite colors. They're not white. Why are they not white? I don't own any of these in white. I swore I had some from my old Lego sets, but I have my old Lego classic sets. I don't try to mix them with my new stuff. 
but you're just gonna keep this right here. This actually keeps the balloon nice and tight to the car. And you're gonna make sure that this piece is at least raised one stud up above the rest. And obviously even with this. It's actually gonna sit kind of like that there. Um, oh, yeah, like that there. So one stud up at least, I actually have it two on this one and the other one has an open space so it, it didn't really matter. But you can see here, if I can get it to focus, you see how it's all smooth going from the handlebar piece back to the other one. And this one does have the one by one and the flat uh, one by two tile. When I have that there, inside the handlebar, then I'm going to also slide it underneath just like I did before. And I suggest before you pulling too tight that you get this all attached to your car. This is going to attach pretty easily because I've, I say that, attach pretty easily, just like that. The car itself should be at least 10 studs long from the back of the car to the front, at least. And that's because when it was shorter, the balloon would fall and the car would run the balloon over. It caused an issue. Now that I've gone over all the basics of the building the car, why don't we see them rock it on past? Give me just a second and you'll see a glimpse of each car. All right guys, this is car number one. I'm gonna blow it up. So before you launch it, you can put your thumb right over the balloon just like that, it holds the air in. I find that newer balloons work best after using them about 10 times, they really lose the push that they give. You see, I don't have this blown up a lot, not because I can't have it blown up a lot, but because I don't wanna uh, lose all my breath and pass out in video. <laughs> I'm gonna set it up back here, and here we go. Three, two, one. Oh, there it goes. All right. Car number two, we're gonna blow it up. I'm gonna blow it up a little bit more than I did last time. And again, I put my thumb on the back while I set it down and get it ready to go. And then I, three, two, one, let go. All right, here we go. Three, two, one, go. Whoa. So that guy's actually still going. If I had a longer table, this thing would easily go on a smooth surface um, 30, 40, 50 feet. Uh, with that being said, I hope you guys seriously enjoy making your own rocket cars. If you have any modifications that you think would make it quicker, please put them down below in the comments. If you have your own rocket car that you have made from inspiration from this, please create a video, share it in the comments below. I would love to put a link to it. Uh, I hope all of you guys really enjoy this. It's a great way to show physics, propulsion, and also just a great way to get a creative setup for children to play with. I hope you guys enjoyed our rocket cars. And if you did, please like, subscribe, and share.